The Cecil Hotel was opened in 1927. 19 floors and 700 rooms. It was originally built as a fashionable hotel, but within a few years, the Great Depression struck and it became more of a transient hotel. It's had a lot of attention in recent years. There have been an incredible number of deaths in the hotel, prompting one former employee to say, is there any room where someone hasn't died? Tarnishing its reputation further, the sensational death of foreign student visitor Elisa Lamb passed away in, or should I say on, the hotel in 2013. The Cecil's reputation was sealed when the TV show American Horror Story based its fifth season theme, Hotel, on the Cecil. Paranormal investigators, tourists, and death hags have tried over the years to get inside the hotel, but because of the negative attention, the hotel hired extra security to keep the tragedy seekers out. They even changed the name to Stay on Main. Although the enormous Cecil Hotel sign in the terrazzo and hanging off the front of the building historically can never be changed. With the pandemic and the Cecil failing on hard times, they allowed the TV show Ghost Adventures to shoot a two-hour special in the hotel. I've appeared on the show two times previously, the Hollywood Sign episode and the silent movie theater. Zach Bagans called on me once more to show the crew around the Cecil Hotel and give insight into its bizarre history at night in the dark. We had full access to each and every room. Going up and down the floors, it felt like we were in some kind of bizarre advent calendar. During the episode, we investigated several of the rooms where deaths occurred, and two rooms where serial killers stayed, including the infamous Richard Ramirez Night Stalker room. I have been on a lot of paranormal investigations, and rarely am I affected by things. When we were in the room where beloved L.A. icon Pigeon Goldie was murdered in 1964, I was very much affected and wanted out. Now, I wasn't involved in the actual Elisa Lamb segment on Ghost Adventures, but Zach knew my interest in the story, the place, and especially Elisa Lamb. So Zach asked the producer to take me up to the roof. First, I decided to take my camera and walk the very same path that Elisa Lamb would have walked to get from her room, 412, to the elevator bank. I can't see. 
It was crazy to actually be inside that very elevator where that insane footage of Elisa Lam, that very, very spooky footage of her appearing to speak to people, to hide from people, to jump, to make bizarre hand movements. We were in the very same place she was. That was creepy. Because this happened so quickly, this rooftop footage was shot with no preparation. Thus, the quality is very dark. I was able to take some still images that I have inserted in this video, so you'll get an idea of what it looks like. These particular images were automatically adjusted by my camera, so they almost appear like they were taken in the daytime. When we get to the water tanks, the one on the right in the very back, you'll see a wooden rickety ladder. One of the last things Elisa Lamb would do is climb that rickety ladder to the top of that water tank. She would not come down alive.
Elisa was staying briefly in Los Angeles on her trip from Vancouver to Santa Cruz. She was last physically seen on January 31st. On February 1st is when the elevator footage was found. 18 days later, February 19th, Cecil Hotel guests complained of poor water pressure, discoloration. Some reported that the water had an odd smell or taste. A maintenance worker was told to go to the roof and check the water tanks, and he saw that one was opened. He looked inside and found Elisa's decomposing body floating face up. She was naked, but her clothing was also floating in the same tank. Elisa's family confirmed that she had a history of bipolar disorder and was taking medication. Her body did test positive for the drugs she was prescribed, but because of the condition of her body, the amounts could not be determined. There was no trauma to her body. How Elisa got on the roof is not exactly known. It would have been pretty simple to reach it by the flimsy fire door or one of the fire escapes on the sides of the hotel. Easily. Foul play was not suspected. Neither was suicide. Her death was ruled accidental drowning. Her cell phone was never found. Thank you very much to the people who are sponsoring this page. The Patreon link is below. The PayPal link is below. Your sponsorship means everything, especially Anna Storm, James Harrington, Michael Bauden, Liz Cole, Marie, Michael Dickman, Jim Varkalis, Dwayne Brantley, Christina Galbraith, Abby Pellegrino, Brandy Raver, Paul Baker, and especially my dear friend Cece. Uh, Cece, you've been a terrific supporter and it means a lot. Everyone... Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe below. Please leave a comment below. If you have something to say, something to add, like it, dislike it, it's all good. But please do uh, subscribe because that means everything. And thank you very much for your time and for your attention. And until next time, Scott with Dearly Departed Online. Bye. You heard me.